Hello everybody, welcome to one of my videos. My name's Jamie, I'm from Woolens Games. Today we're doing the Games Pick Up video. Now as a result of vet bills and car payments and other gobbledygook, there was not a Game Pick Up video for January 2020. So we're going straight on to February 2020 and this is what I bought. Now I'm actually recording this video for my hallway as long as it sounds because this is the only room in my house that's actually tidy at the moment. My first pickup is on the C64, this is Xenon. I've never played it on the C64, I bought this from Play Expo for £6. Amazing shootout classic action music aliens core. Xenon is a must buy game. Not a lot of description there, but as I've done with all my other videos, we're going to play these games. Xenon, the copyright Melbourne House, the copyright the Bitmap Brothers. Okay, this is another game, this is Xenon. Xenon is a 1988 vertical scrolling shooter game, first developed by the Big Mac Brothers and published by Melbourne House, which is then owned by Mastertronic. It was featured by a play-by-phone game on Sunday morning kids' show, Get Fresh. And in 1989, Xenon was followed by Xenon 2 Mega Blast, which is absolutely classic. I know it's not to everyone's taste, but I absolutely love it. That was the first game I saw on the Amiga, which made us want an Amiga so badly, which we got in 1989, which is the Batman pack. To this day, to this year, should we say, 2020, I've still not finished that game. I get to the final level. It's not good enough for a completion, but one day I will do it, but it's taken quite a few years. But anyway, that is Xenon 2, this is Xenon 1, and I'm playing it for the, on the C64 for the very first time. I might have played it on the Amiga, but I can't really recall. If it was, it was some time ago. Now you do actually have two different crafts. An aircraft and one that goes on the ground, some sort of tank. And you switch between the two of them by pressing the space bar. But every time you kill aliens, you get these cells, which has a letter on it. And I've got them all written down on a bit of paper. Right, we have A. A is for armor, make sure craft invisible for 15 seconds. That will help pause with statistics. F is for fuel, which you get in two different sizes. One replenishes a little bit of fuel, and one replenishes all of it. We also get H, which is homing missiles, last 15 seconds. L is laser, and a gun, which is G, which cancels the laser, referring back to your original bullets. Okay, boss battle, but unfortunately we've got to do this while being a tank, which I'm not overly keen on. I have to admit, I prefer to be flying. When you're flying, you're constantly shooting forwards or up, because you're always facing up. Now we're trying to avoid these bullets, and the direction you're facing is where you shoot. Now it's quite difficult to get him in the right position and shoot in the right direction when you're trying to avoid all these bullets. Especially when the area is very, very small to shoot. There's not a lot of room for error here. So, yeah, he does shoot a lot of bullets, and he moves around quite a lot. But the area we've got to shoot is that tiny little opening section at the front. At the moment, I'm doing... Well, he's doing more damage to me than I'm him. My energy is... Bad. Really bad. Love the music though. Right, okay. Look at my energy. One more hit and I'm a dead tank. There we go. Boom, boom, pow. Have some of that. Okay, air or ground. Air. Space bar. P is power. Increases the distance of shots travel. R is weight. Speed up your ground craft. S is side. Arms or fight up your side shots. W is wings, give your wingtip weapons, and Z is zap, which kills enemies off the screen. And we get balls, a maximum of three, giving your fighter additional bullets. And speaking of bullets, one more hit and I'm dead. Whether I'm an aircraft or a tank, one more hit and I'm dead. And when you die, you do lose all your weapons. Now I love shooting them up, so I don't like losing your weapons when you die. That and enemies appearing from behind you is never a nice thing. But the result is death. I'm assuming you can get energy in this game. I hope so. Could be an F. Maybe. At the moment, I'm hanging on there. I'm hanging in there by a thread. Now, when you die, you go back to the last checkpoint you reach, which is usually after a boss battle. Like zap. Kills most things. Didn't kill that thing, though. Okay, I'm staying here while I'm safe. For long though, it never is. Lots of pickups. Yes! According to the game's instruction manual, the player assumes the role of Darian as future space pilot in the Federation, currently at war by a mysterious violent enemy called the Zenites. Which has lasted a decade. In response to a Mayday call 
transmission from Captain Zod following an attack on the trading fleet. Damage is forced to travel through the Zenite occupied territory in order to support. Okay, we have another boss battle, but unfortunately it's the same one. And unfortunately we've got to use the same vehicle again. Okay. Again, shoot a very, very small, narrow area, which is the front of him. But make sure you're facing the right direction. Energy is bad. But he has a lot more energy than I do. Unfortunately, you can't see it on the screen. Some shoot ups have that, and some of them don't. And this one doesn't. Right. Uh... Now, also... That ball will also shoot in the direction you're facing. So I can't really sort of make a lot of contact with that one. I'm taking hits, I'm taking damage. There we go, boom and pow! Loading. Unlike most vertical scrolling shooters, the player can, has two bows, a flying plane and a ground tan. Transitions between the craft can be initiated at almost any time during gameplay, except for midway and end of level bosses. And some levels, it is actually forced upon you. And the mode chosen depends on the nature of the problem that the player is facing. But at the moment, I've got a big, big problem, because I don't have any additional weapons. Because if you're dying, you lose all your weapons. But this is a different area. And spacebar, we can't actually switch to the tank here. So we need some weapons ASAP. They're there, but they're not easy to get to. Now W is wings. There we go. We're firing with wings. Better. And again, that will fire forward because that's the way we're facing. A bit different if we're the tank. I don't want to be a tank. Alright, on we go. Sector 2 this is. We used to fire a lot. Ooh, yeah. I'm a big fan of the Big Bad Brothers game, but I've definitely not played this before on a CG4. This is the first. I'm gonna die. See it, I can see it. Right, we're flying sideways as well. Okay, we're flying in all directions. Ugh. You still can't switch between flight and ground. There we go, boss battle. Okay, boss battle. Slightly bigger this one. But I've got more bullets this time. I think so is he. Right, I have three bars of energy left. He has, I have no idea. It doesn't tell you. I am a tank. He's a great big spaceship. But I'd rather be a spaceship. So again, the area we've got to shoot is very, very narrow. Very, very thin. And very, very difficult to get to. Even with three bullets, it's not going to be easy. Ugh. Every so often he dives in. That's going to be like hitting a brick wall. It's going to hurt for sure. Probably an instant kill, I imagine. Being a plane is going to be a lot easier, because I'm always going to be facing forwards. Right. Two bars of energy left. He has, I have no idea. He doesn't tell you. I have an energy bar, and so should you, in my opinion. And also, you cannot go the full length of the screen. You go just over halfway, and it stops you. I don't think I would like to change about this game. Right, uh, the right time. That's such a narrow area to shoot. Even three bullets. Too difficult. Right, he's flashing. I have two bars of energy remaining. He has absolutely no idea, but flashing is a good sign. Close, Jamie. Ugh, there's another hit by me. That's two hits by me, or by me, on me, by him. Right, now it's going to be tough. There we go, boom, boom, pow! Have some of that. Next game I bought was also at Play Expo. This is Solid Hedgehog 2 on the Master System. Ride a runaway rail cart, fly the hang glider through a raging storm, and fly through a mind-boggling maze of twisting pipes as you and Sonic the Hedgehog race to save Taos and his friends from the evil Dr. Robotnik. It's the hottest 8-bit action ever. There we go, cost me 6 quid. There we go, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, copyright 992. Haven't played this for years, let's go.
Okay, so the game is Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Mars system. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is a 1992 platform game developed by Aspect and published by Sega for the Mars system and Game Gear. The game is a sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog and follows the character Sonic as he attempts to rescue his friend Tails from the evil villainous Dr. Robotnik. Not to mention Kerry. The gameplay was based on a number of levels while collecting gold rings and attacking enemies. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was met with critical acclaim from reviewers praising its visuals and its gameplay, but criticising its high level difficulty. In 1903, a sequel, Sonic Chaos, was released. I haven't played this for absolutely years. I think the Mega Drive version I played the most, but with Sonic the Hedgehog 1, I think I played the Master System the most. But let's see how we do. Right, this is the underground zone, and we're in a cart. A bit like Donkey Kong. Right, we've got to jump from cart to cart at times. Now, I've got more statistics to read about this game, but let's see how we do. Now, collecting 100 rings will gain you another life. We start the game off with three lives. And, of course, it's one of the problems... <laughs> One of the biggest problems of retro gaming history, when you take one hit by an enemy, or hit a spike, you lose all your rings. That's terrible, but there we go. We spin that, and we see Dr. Robotnik's evil moustache. We've got another life, I wasn't even paying attention. Okay, this is Underground Zone 2. Unfortunately, you start each level with zero rings. Before you have rings in your possession, you won't die if you hit an enemy or an enemy attack. However, there are some things that are instant kills, if I remember rightly. Falling into a bottomless pit is an instant kill, whether it rings or not, as well as falling into a spike pit. Anything else, I think you're okay. Lava, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm not going to risk it for a biscuit. But what I am going to try and do is gain another life by getting 100 rings. Right, we have four lives. Now, spikes on the ceiling, avoid those. Enemies, you can kill them by jumping on them or spinning them, whatever the case may be. I don't think you get any other abilities in the future level. I can't really remember. Right, 54, 55, 56, 57. Now, Dr. Robotnik is not far away, and I think he's appeared in every single Sonic game, if I remember rightly. And the Master System PAL version was released on October 16th, 1992. Right, spin this enemy, I don't want to be killed by him. Or lose my rings. It's almost as bad. Uh, the Game Gear version, released in Europe, uh, October 29th, 1992. North America, November 17th, 1992. Japan, November 21st. And Australia, November 30th, 1992. Right, watch out for the flames, Jamie. Right, 85. 86, 87, 88. Right, nine more to go. Hitting an enemy is going to change all that. Hopefully we'll find what we're looking for up here. But watch out for spikes on the ceiling. There's actually a secret passageway up the top. I haven't get to it, I have no idea. I've only killed myself then. Never mind, we didn't get 100 rings, we did make it safely, and there is his moustache again. I don't know if I've ever got anything other than the moustache on that section. So it is past Act 2. Any outstanding rings and time is converted into points. Underground Act 3. Okay, Underground Act 3 is where we see Dr. Robotnik. Now, as the game was released before the Sega Genesis version, it represents the debut of character Tails, who would become a mainstay in the series. Whilst the Master System version of the game was not initially released outside Europe and Brazil, it became available worldwide following the release on the Wii's Virtual Console in 2008. Now, as random as it sounds, Dr. Robotnik is always trying to kill Sonic, but this time he actually saves him. I don't know why you did that. I was going to be dying there, because I was going to fall on a, a pit of lava. But never mind, he puts you here. This is a boss battle, but even though you don't actually face Dr. Robotnik, you face this thing. I don't know what it is, but it's got pictures. Now, I did struggle in the old days, but I was quite young in the old days. But all you've got to do is jump over these bouncing balls. But not the bouncing balls you get in a pinball machine. So, it hits him multiple times, and he gets faster. And eventually, Dr. Robotnik gets fed up with him and kills him himself. Like that. There we go, we've got five lives, and we're at the 103 minute mark. And there we go. Now, like the first game, we have to release animals. But this time, we hit this thing. And what do we get this time? We get bluebirds and bunny rabbits. There we go, Sonic. Well done. Five lives and animals have been rescued. Sonic gets past Act 3, ring, time, and score bonus. There we go. Last game I bought from Play Expo. This is Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap. Yes, I bought it. Wonder Boy has been cursed. He critically wounded the ugly bees, but its final breath turns Wonder Boy into a lizard man. The young fighter must now seek out the Salamander Cross, the only force that can restore him to his normal self, but first he must find it. There we go. There we go. Wonder Boy 3 on the Mars System. I'm playing this for the first time on the Mars System. The only version I've played is actually the remake. 
Okay, this is some of the games. Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap. It's a platforming action adventure game developed by Weststone as part of Sega's Wonder Boy series. It was published by Sega, released for the Master System in 1989, and for the Game Gear in 1992 as Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap. It was ported by Hudson Soft and released in 1901 for the Graphics 16 PC Engine under the name Dragon's Curse. It was also ported in 1993 by Brazilian company Tectoy under the title Trouble de Monica mm -mm Resgate, with the game retooled to include characters from the Brazilian comic book series Monica's Gang. A remake developed by Lizard Cube and published by Dot Emu titled Wonder Boy and the Dragon's Trap was released in April 2017, which I've played and finished. It's a very good game actually. But I've never played this version on the Master System before. Let's see how we do. We have a short range sword and a shield. And we'll be attacked by skeletons with no heads. Heads or no heads, they're still attacking us. Right, we can jump as well as attack. Right, we've got to find a room called a dragon's room, which is a boss battle. Defeat the dragon and we turn into a dragon and we can fire fire. It's what dragons are best known to do. However, this is not your normal dragon, this next one, because it's a robot dragon. Kill these enemies with a short range sword and we go to the door and boss battle is going to be here. Not long into the game, boss battle already. And here he is, we've got to hit him in the face. But when you hit him in the face, backtrack to avoid his flame. Do this multiple times. Good game, really good fun. We need, we, I should have got this game a long time ago. Right, hit him in the face, backtrack. Keep doing that, and we should defeat him. And our ward is turning into a dragon. Not quite like that. Not the same size as that. There we go, good, good, pow! Have some of that. We have coins. And this is where we turn into a dragon. Right, the place is falling down. It's going to self-destruct, which is why it's flashing and it's shaking. But now we are a dragon and we can fire flames. One hit will kill the enemy with that. And he can be at a slightly more distance. He doesn't go the full length of the screen, so keep a reasonable distance. Now blocks will fall from the ceiling, so watch out for that. Now this level is a little bit of a maze to find that first section. Make a mistake and you go back to the start. It's not going to happen here. All we've got to do is get out of here. We have a key! Fantastic! Just happens to be a door requiring that key. In we go. Right, so this is where blocks do their thing. Fall a lot. Don't be hit by a block. But then this place is falling down, caused by a boy with a short range sword killing a robotic dragon. Now that you don't hear every day. Now this is going to be quite difficult to avoid. Let's see what I can do. Is running the way to go, or is it taking it nice and steady the way to go? But then this place is falling apart. Now, do not adjust your sets. Yes, the screen is shaking. It's nothing on your TV or your monitor or your mobile phone or your pad. It is falling down here. At the moment, we have very good energy, but that does change very, very soon. But any gold you pick up is on the top right corner of the screen. Now we've got to wait patiently for these blocks to do their thing. A little bit like Tetris in its ways. You don't be crushed by these. You don't be crushed by anything, really. Right, it's like a staircase. Up we go. Okay, we're out in the open. Right, we can't go in there, we don't have the key to do so. But we have more skeletons, but these ones have heads. They have heads, I have fire now. There we go. Brilliant game. Nice and steady. We have ones with hats. There we go, follow the arrow, tells you where to go. There we go, the castle has blown up. I keep thinking Mario's going to pop out any time and he's going to say, Sorry Mario, this princess in another castle. Okay, the game takes place after the events of Wonder Boy in Monster Land in which Wonder Boy has been cursed by the Mecha Dragon. And must locate the Salamander Cross to lift it. The game is linear and features varying landscapes in which the player must navigate. Players find items and clues needed to access different types of monster lands and they can transform into other forms and gain different abilities. Like being a dragon and firing fire. Now chests do contain the occasional hearts. As you can see our hearts are now taking a great big drop. Now we've got two. So in we go. Gold we have 48 and potions we have a big fat zero as well. 
So, on we go. Let's try and find the next section, which I do believe is here, if I remember rightly, from playing the remake. Press up to go through the door. Right, now even though swimming is not professionally done if you're a dragon, but you can actually go into the water. And you can hold your breath for a long period of time, but there is one character that you can earn later on in the game, which does give you the ability to swim. Right, no enemies around these parts. Okay, don't go through that door, that'll take you back to the start. Right, now falling in the water won't kill you, in fact it takes you to a different area, but that's not the area I want to go. This is the way I want to go, we'll stick to being outside the water. Right, we have snakes, snakes on an island, one hit with those, we'll suit those out. Now red ones die with a single shot, and I think green die with two, maybe three, I'm not sure. Now these crabs are smaller, so you've got to crouch and shoot, but luckily your cats can do that as well. So just try not to fall in the water. As random as it sounds, even though you are a dragon, and water and fire don't go well together, but you can actually still use your attack in the water. Right, kill enemies to get gold. Use gold to buy anything from weapons to additional armour. And potions as well. We have 72 in total. And we have our collectibles. Right, don't fall in the water, Jamie. Pick up the coins. Now, Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Chat, received wide acclaim for gaming magazines upon its release. It was praised for its colourful and cartoon-like graphics, and its rich sound and diverse sound effects, and varied and addictive gameplay. Criticisms included sp a sprite flickering in the Master System version, and as well as slippery controls. It won Electric Gaming Monthly's Best Game of the Year award for the Master System in 1999. Reviews from the gaming magazine had described the game as one of the best Metal Master System and 8-bit titles of the time. Not bad for a game that had flickery sprites and slippery controls. However, I've not seen any sprite flicker, but I didn't have to read the statistics. They do flicker when you hit an enemy, which you expect, that's killing them. Right, this one is going to die with more hits. One. Two, three. Okay, it's three. And we get a heart from it. A small heart is a little bit of energy. A big heart is a heart increase. Well, this thing is shooting up into the air. Now keep close, and we should be fine. 76 gold. Jamie, you must crouch. Multi kill. Can you jump on their heads? I really can't remember, but I'm not going to risk it. Use fire as a safer option. Right, now we've got blue ones, and we've got a cloud wearing sunglasses. It's causing a bit of an issue, so it's now it's, we're fighting fire with fire. So let's keep going. It's quite difficult, I have to admit. It's a very, very fast cloud. A really, really fast cloud with fast flaming bullets. Go for the door. Get out of here. Okay, I've got two doors. This is a shop, if I remember rightly. Right, shopping please. Well, these are very expensive and I can't afford any of those. So I'm just going to exit, shall we? Right, we'll go to the store instead. What have we got in store here? We have a chest, which has a key. Fantastic. Right, we're going to go back to the start. I think that's where we're going to need to use it. Okay, on we go. Wonder Boy 3, Dragon's Trap, takes place immediately after the events of Wonder Boy in Monster Land. Wonder Boy travels into the Mega Dragon's Lair in order to slay him. However, upon doing so, he is infected with a curse that transforms him into a lizard man in the game. The player controls Wonder Boy as he tries to undo the curse by journeying across the land, defeating other dragons, and finally defeating the vampire dragon to obtain the Salamander Cross, the only object that can be removing his curse. Right, uh, let's go back here. Okay, we have the key! In we go! After completing the first level of the game, the player becomes Lizard Man from Alesto, a town in Monsterland, and becomes non-linear. From there, the player explores and finds items and clues needed for Wonder Boy to access different parts in Monsterland. Gold and secondary items can be found by defeating enemies and opening chests. With gold, the player can buy additional items, better equipment in shops, and restore life meters in hospitals. Items with question marks displayed cannot be bought unless the player has charm, which can be increased by collecting charm stones or by equipping certain items. Right, we have a frog. Jump in a lot. And it's a very, very big frog. It's bigger than me. Okay, we have a blue frog. Oh, Lord. Two, three, four, five, six. And it's still alive. I know frogs are cold-blooded. 
my move. Is that seven? That's a lot of hits to kill a jumping frog. One? Oh, there's double of them. What's worse than one jumping frog? Two. Once you've got them, you can keep hitting them like that. There we go. Lock them to the spot. Right, 237 gold. Two, three, four, five. Whoa! Killed by a gigantic frog. They take a lot of energy away. They can get lots of heart increases. At the moment, I've only got two. Not a lot. I don't know. And he turns into that thing. I don't know how you activate potions. I have no idea. Right, one, two. Whoa! Okay, I wasn't expecting that. It took away all my energy there. Next game I bought, this is on the Amiga. This is Hard Driving by Domark. The ultimate driving simulator that leaves all other driving games behind. Hard Driving is not just the best game on offer, it's a whole new driving experience. How would you like to test drive a high powered sports car on a stunt course? Have you ever jumped a drawbridge and driven a loop de loop? Now's your chance. Or maybe high speed driving is an idea of excitement. Step on the gas and try to keep control while skidding around the corners. Weave in and out of the traffic and avoid oncoming cars. This game is easy, if not. <laughs> to learn, but hard to master. And will apply to any age. Take hard driving for a test drive today. Warning, this is one game that parents could actually win. As a result, there might be short-term damaging effects on your young egos until they get even. There we go. Hard Driving, written by Jürgen Friedrich. Now this is a game which I've owned for a very long time, but not as a box version, and I'm absolutely terrible at this game. Now I've plugged in the Mega 500 for this one, because on the 1200 it would be absolutely insane. So let's see what we can do. Okay, use arrows and return keys. Steering, stick, stick one, or mouse. Now I have to admit, in the old days, I always used the mouse. But I bought this game because this is a game I want to try and get better at, because I'm terrible. But I'm going to go with mouse is what I used to do. So, yeah. Okay, this is Hard Driving. Hard Driving is a 3D arcade hit from Atari Games. You are in control of a high quality performance sports car. Your objective is to race around the course as fast as possible and hit as many checkpoints as possible. If you hit a checkpoint, you gain extra time to go further. You will see traffic on the road, both in your direction and in the other direction, so be careful when you pass. The course is set in two sections, the speed track and stunt track. The speed track is longer, but you can usually achieve higher speeds. Stunt track requires you to perform several stunts, such as jumping bridges, driving through a loop-the-loop, -loop, and so on. Now the reason why I bought this game, because this is a game I'm terrible at, but I bought the case version to see if I can learn anything else. And I think the reason why I was so bad in the old days, because I didn't realise you got to use mouse and joystick. In the old days, I was just using mouse. So I'm jumping over a bridge, but the bit I've never achieved in this game is the loop the loop. So I'm accelerating with the joystick and steering with the mouse, which is what I used to do. But I didn't know you could brake and accelerate with the joystick. It's amazing I got anywhere. But this is the loop the loop. I have never successfully got round this loop the loop. Now driving games, I'm not spectacular at. But let's see if I can finally get round this difficult hazard. And I've done it! I landed off road, but I've done it for the first time in my life. Oh my lord. Now we're going over a bridge. My lord, I've actually done it, but there's a truck! There's a truck! Oh, I don't believe it. I hit the ground and then hit a truck. We went straight through it. Right, that is the best go I've ever had. I'm literally about 30, maybe 40 seconds into the game, but I've achieved something I've never achieved. Now that, compared to the loop the loop I shouldn't really have failed there. I shouldn't really have exploded there. But okay, we get another chance. But I do have 33 seconds. All we've got to do is get over this bridge and don't hit a truck. I very nearly did. Right, okay. Checkpoint. Turn. Turn. Extra time. Never seen that. I never got here. Okay, got 54 seconds. Right, it's all new to me. 
Now, the movement is difficult, which is probably why it's called hard driving, but it, it's not very responsive. There's a little bit of a delay until it actually turns, but make sure you're going at the right speed. Uh, otherwise, we go off the edge. And this looks a little bit like Daytona right now. At the moment, whoa! We're staying on the track and we're avoiding cars! And don't go off the edge, 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 wrong direction! We're on the grass, never mind. Right, 35 seconds. Not a lot, but I've achieved a lot today. Right, okay, we go through the checkpoints. Now make sure you take your foot off the accelerator at the right time. <clears throat> Don't go too fast, found areas where you shouldn't go too fast, and watch out for the car! <clears throat> My lord, 24 seconds, off-road! Right, okay, 22 seconds. All we've got to do is go around here. Now, you, when you go off-road, you have 10 seconds to get back on it. And I've got 18 seconds to get around this. Jamie, slow down, ease off the accelerator. Turn, but stay on the road. 14 seconds, 13 seconds. 12 seconds. We're still on there. We're still on there. We're off again. I think I went off on the wrong... Oh. Hang on, man. We're still going. We're still going. Where am I? Okay. The red flag on the course marks the last point pass. Race to the checkpoint for extra time and the finish line for extended time. Well, I know that. But I've achieved the loop the loop. As crazy as it sounds, at the age of 37 years old, I've finally gone round a loop the loop without crashing. Auto, no clutch. Right, one step at a time. Manual is a little bit too extreme. Right, press fire to start the engine. Okay, don't go too fast, don't go too slow, don't drive into the back of another car. But let's go the stunt route, shall we? Take it nice and steady, but not too nice and steady. Now, crashing the car has no serious consequences, and indeed shows a replay of your crash from the cinematic angle. Admire your crash land onto the cement truck or clipping the minivan or flying off the bridge in the wrong angle. You lose several seconds as your car is reset and you get to speed up again. The home conversions retain most of then advanced 3D graphics but lack the force feedback that was on the arcade version. Oh! Right, okay. Once you go out of control, it's very difficult to get back into control. Right, we're off road, but it's fine, let's get it fairly straight and we'll go for the jump. Fire to accelerate. Mouse to turn. I don't want to be going too slow because you go like that. We don't go too fast because the landing is going to hurt. Right, one minute, eight seconds. We're approaching the loop the loop. Take it nice and steady. We do get time when we reach a checkpoint. we we'll turn. We're going to hit a lamppost. Turn. Turn! We've got a lot of speed to gain here. Right, go. Go, go, go. Go, go, gadgets. Let's go. Hard driving. This is my second attempt today. The loop, the loop. I hit a car. I hit a car while going round a loop, the loop. Let's see that in an instant replay. Yeah. Well, I reckon I would have done that if, I, if it wasn't a car doing the same thing. There we go, we go round, we hit a car, while going round a loop the loop. And our car explodes. And then I reset and I blow up again. I can't be blamed for that one. Look at that, I just fell out the sky. Okay. Right, on we go. Accelerate. Ugh. We're upside down. Wrong direction. That's not good. There we go. I was actually flying through the sky upside down for quite some time. It's like E.T. in car terms. But E.T. didn't crash. I did. <clears throat> right. Okay, the game. It's hard. It's mean. It's here. It's hard driving. The ultimate driving simulator races on your home computer from its runaround success on the arcade. Now you can get behind the wheel of the world's top sports car on the stunt course Jump bridges, drive the speed track, or even get dizzy on the vertical loop. All in super realistic, solid 3D. Top drivers can challenge the Phantom Proton in the head-to-head -head challenge, no-holes-barred contest to find the top hard driver. 
Right, let's try and do this. Let's try not to hit any cars. I mean, that's probably the way I'm going wrong at the early stages because there's more cars at the early stages. This is a race after all. Our score is down the bottom left where our lap time is. The time to beat or the time to challenge, it says there, is two minutes. In my case, the challenge is staying on the track. The challenge is going round that loop the loop. Right, let's go over here. Now it does say it's 60 miles per hour. I'm just over that. Perhaps I went to 60 miles an hour, like it said, that wouldn't have happened, right? Next time, Jamie, go by the speed limit. It's telling you 60 miles an hour. We made it, but the land was a little bit too hard. Hard driving. And I'm drink driving. Hard driving consists of two tracks, the stunt track and the speed track, each testing a different aspect of your driving skills. The stunt track features three main stunts, the bridge jump, the loop-the-loop -loop, and the bank. Pay particular attention to the speed signs and your own velocity. Driving at more than 60 miles per hour over the bridge will launch your car into the air and crash on landing. And under 60 miles per hour means you won't make the jump far enough. The 60 miles per hour minimum sign on the vertical loop means you have to be going at 60 miles per hour or more to stay in the loop to go through it. As you practice, you'll be able to take the bridge, bank, and loop at more than the recommended speeds. Right, let's see how we can do it. 1 minute 32 remaining. We need to go at 60 miles per hour over the bridge. The sign said so. Right, okay. Watch out for the truck. Is it a car? It's a car. Watch out for the car. Right, we're going a little bit too fast. We need to slow down a little bit. And skidding is definitely going to slow me down, but it was not the plan. Right, 60. And straighten out, Jamie. Whoa! Straight, straight, straight. There we go. Oh, my lord. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Just. Yeah. Okay. So far, so good. I'm slightly out of control. Slow down. Slow down. Right, are we ready? Are we steady? Off-road. Not yet. Go for it. Pedal to the metal. We're going at 100 miles per hour. We're going for it. We're going for it. We're going. We're going. We're going. We've done it. No, we're not. We've gone round again. I think I'm going the wrong way. Right, now I'm confused. Am I going the wrong way? No, I actually got Rickman it twice. There we go, now I'm showing off. Okay, 50 seconds. There we go, uh, there's the checkpoint. This is the first time I've done the bridge and the loop the loop and reached the checkpoint without crashing. Oh! <laughs> ah! What was I talking about? I hit a truck. Oh, well, that's work in progress. Make it to the checkpoint on the course and you will receive a time bonus. If you do a fast enough lap, you can race the Phantom Photon, which is a computer car, in a race around the stunt track. The Phantom drives a mean race and crashing means instant disqualification. Well, if it was that car and I did that, I would have been disqualified. And there'd be no recovery from that. Anyone that goes head on into a truck at high speed, you probably aren't going to get out of that alive. Right, let's go again. We have a minute seven going. Right, let's try and do this bank. Not talk about the place where you put your money after you get paid. Right, let's do this again. This is going a little bit peak tong. Right, time is two minutes four. So we haven't beaten the challenge time. We went for a checkpoint again. Now come on, Jamie. All you got to do is stay in a straight line. Wheels are going crazy. Right. The bank. We can do it. We can do this. Not too fast. Not too slow. Now I tend to lose it at the end. I get round most of it and I lose it at the end. A little bit of off-roading. Car! Car! Avoid the car! Turn, 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 turn. Turn, 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 turn. Ten. We've done it! I've done it! Woohoohoo! Yes! No! Yes! We've done it! 
We succeeded! Fantastic! Apart from hitting a truck at high speed, I've done it. Now what's going to happen? At the age of 37 years old, I've finally done it. We're going to go at 90. Mind you, I'm out of control. Oh! Wrong way. Where's the end? Where's the exit? Where's the finish line? Don't hit a side post. Is that the exit? Is that... Well, Jamie, what's this exit all about? It's a finish line. Yes! Yes! Yes, baby! I've done it for the first time! I can't believe it! Hard driving! Extended play! Fantastic! I've never done this before! Okay, we're in 35 seconds. Not going to be doing a lot with 35 seconds. Okay, we gained some time. Let's go around and do it again. But I'm not going to get that far. I can't do that again in 30 seconds. Only a fool would do that. There we go. 7,102 points. There we go. I'm pleased with that. It's the best score ever. Right, game tips. Practice skip control. This can save valuable seconds, as can good road positioning on the bends. Advanced drivers can usually take the bank at 110 miles per hour by going on it at the right and steering heavily to the left on the exit. But watch out that you don't go over the edge. There we go. Controls. Use joystick or mouse for steering, joystick or keyboard for gear change. I've done it. I've just done another track. Right, I've just done the whole speed track and the whole stump track. So I've definitely been learning stuff today. I'm achieving stuff today. There's one. There you go! He made it! Fantastic! What a mate! Superb! There we go! I beat it again! 9,516! I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm not going to put that in again because typing in more with this game on the mouse takes ages. But anyway, that's hard driving. Next game I bought is on the Amiga. This is Emotion. Never played it, but it was cheap and the condition is immaculate. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to the first new age computer game. Take it easy, Emotion is here to entertain, not outrage, to expand your mind and explode it. Emotion, E is for Einstein, takes you to a world outside the stress and tension of the 1990s, a new age. Here you can play to win or simply to enjoy the ever-changing kaleidoscope of rich colors and infinite patterns. Emotion allows you to manipulate nature, moving through 50 levels of multicolored puzzles and challenges. Emotion is for everyone who likes to win, but also wants to see the 21st century. Not really read there, there's different words. Let's give it a try. Emotion, conceived, designed and programmed by the assembly line. I've had one go prior to this. I sort of get it. It's not going to be a very long footage for this one. Instructions, if left, the ball explodes and costs you energy. Collide same colour balls to destroy them. Different colours generate a pod of the third colour. Run over pods for extra energy. Pods expand into new balls if you leave them. And that's it. Okay, let's give it a quick whirl. Came out in 1990 by US Gold. Okay, this is Emotion. Emotion takes place in a subatomic world where particles can be brought into existence, accelerated, collided, and destroyed. Strange elastic bonds can form between the particles and complex latencies will block your path, but beware, nothing is stable in a strange world and only the most experienced and expert nuclear pilots can prevent particle meltdown. Right, I'm not going to play this one very long, but it's going to be quite difficult to explain, but I'll try one's best. We are a green ball with an arrow and two eyeballs. I'm assuming they're eyeballs. And the object of the game is to get rid of these balls. And they're called particles. How do we do this? We do this by hitting one colour ball with the same colour ball. When two balls of the same colour hit each other, they will disappear. But there's twists. There's always twists to this tail. If one colour ball hits the wrong colour, then a new particle will form, which is very, very small at first. But there is a twist, another twist. When it's a small particle, you can actually consume it, which gives you more energy. Your energy is at the top. But if you don't eat it quickly, it will turn into a bigger ball, and then that gives you more work to do. So try not to make more balls by hitting the wrong coloured one. 
Because you're going to have so much work to do. And the object of the game is to get rid of all of them. And there's another twist. Because after a while, they will start to pulsate. When they start to pulsate, they will explode. When they explode, that actually loses energy. So when there's a lot of them on the screen and they explode, you're probably going to die very, very quickly. But it's timed. Of course it's timed. Now this one, we're going to get the blue balls and avoid the yellow. Bonus points awarded. 9,500. E-Motion gives you control of a ship which can be rotated left and right and moved in the direction it is currently facing. The ship is used to push coloured spheres around the screen and each sphere, maybe one or three different colours, contained one or three different shapes. Okay, now they're starting to pulsate a little bit quicker, so we need to hurry up because they're going to explode. Now if the last colour is actually the last one on the screen when it explodes, it's not so much the end of the world, because yes, that will get rid of them, it will take some of your energy away, but because it's the final colour on the screen, it won't kill you. It shouldn't kill you. But try to avoid it, prevent it if you can. But there we go, we still had enough energy to do the job. Right, they do have sometimes these elastic bonds. A bit like elastic bands, just to make it a little bit difficult. Of course, they're going to bounce around. But it's going to be a bit difficult if you don't want to be hitting the wrong colour. Which has just happened. So, if I don't sort this out quickly, it's going to get out of control. And it is getting out of control. So, yeah. I'll be very, very surprised if I'm going to do this one. Right, blue to blue. I'll give it a try. They're pulsating, they're exploding, and I'm dying. Right, we go again. That was a disaster. Right, okay. So you can hit it as hard as you can to go in the right direction. But don't hit it where it's going to hit the wrong colour. And when it's on a spring or band like this, anything could happen. Right, now that one actually formed a small one, which as you can see, I consumed it. And because I consumed it, we gain more energy. And because it didn't explode, we stay alive. And they all explode at the same time, but amazingly... Oh, I did die that time. Okay. Okay, well this one is proving quite difficult. Level 6. Now sometimes you do need quite a lot of luck. And I'm not getting it. In fact, when they start getting out of control, then they're going to have a whole lot of work. And they're continuously hitting each other and going all over the place. And this is insane. Right, I don't think I'm going to do this one. I really don't think I'm going to do this one. <coughs> it's like a bad game of snooker. Well, we've got a high score. Okay, level 7. Not one of my favourites, I have to admit. It isn't. Right, that was lucky. That was extremely lucky. Right, alright. Do need a lot of luck in this game. A lot of, lot of luck. As Silver Black would say. Um... Now, two exploding won't be as bad as four exploding. So, if I'm quick, I might get away with this. There we go. We'll handle that. Okay, bonus level. Blue, bonus. Red ends the level. So, a little bit of a twist this time. Right, get the blue, avoid the red. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, if you press down, you do a 180 turn. So that could be quite handy, especially if you want to get to one place quickly. Right, 14 seconds. One, two, three. And I've one over here, avoid the red. There we go, handle that one. 2,500 points. Right, level 9. This is the furthest I've ever got. Right, this looks horrible, but I suppose you've got to hit it with a lot of power. Ugh, quickly, yes. Now, you don't get a lot of energy from them. You really, really don't. But I suppose a little bit is better than nothing. Right, level 10. Right, so I'll just bring it with me. We have different colours. Right, it's not as simple as that. It's not as simple as that. I thought it would be. There's one. Oh. Is that it? Right, level 10. I quite like it. It's definitely growing on me. I just wish that it would just, wouldn't explode quite so quickly. 
Alright, okay. Come on, Jamie, we can do this. We can do this. No. That's fine, we survived that. Uh, level 11. Um... Okay. Get in the right place. Uh, that's not good. Uh, now there's 50 levels in this game. My lord, they're going so fast. There's no time. There we go. I think that's all my life's gone. Game over. That's the best game I've ever had. But it is tough. 50 levels and I got to level 10. There we go. No, 11. We got to level 11. But there we go. That is emotion. Okay, the final game I bought is on the media. Once again, this is Global Gladiators. Strap on your goo shooter and join Mick and Mac, the Global Gladiators, on a quest to neutralize the monsters of Slime World, the mystical forest, toxic town, and Arctic world. Check out the bodacious backgrounds, the 1,250 awesome animation frames, and the most spacious sound around. There we go. There we go, Mick and Mac yeah. as the Global Gladiators. Copyright 993 Virgin Games. Awesome. Okay, this other game is Global Gladiators. The Global Gladiators is a 992 platformer game published and developed by Virgin Games, originally programmed by David Perry for the Sega Mega Drive Genesis, and was eventually ported to Virgin Media Games in Europe with the help of Graph Gold and Chrysler Software for the Master System, Game Gear, and Amiga. A Super NES and NES port was in development, but was never completed for undisclosed reasons. Though a ROM image has been surfaced, the game is based on McDonald's fast food chain and has a strong environmentalist message. Right, this is a game I've owned for a very long time, but not as a box version. Now, it's a bit like Cool Spot in its ways, because the scrolling is not the greatest. I have to admit, it's not. It does move rather too fast. But we are playing as Mick or Mac. As playable characters. The game is a spiritual successor to the NES game, MC Kit, another McDonald's themed game, also features Mick and Mac as playable characters. Right, we arrive at a checkpoint. We have four lives and we've got to find McDonald's tokens. And our energy is just below our score. And our time, the dreaded time, features here, down the bottom left. Now we earn additional energy by picking up hearts. Now we have these that throw slime at us. Now we are using a super soaker and yes I had one of those in the old days. What happened to it? Probably went down the tip with all my other stuff. But there we go. Had some good times with it. The arrow is a checkpoint. Right we pick up these M. Now sometimes you might find a platform that is invisible. Invisible to the naked eye but it is there when you find it. When you stand on it it can appear. And sometimes it can surprise your character. He does have some very, very comical animations. When you found enough of the McDonald's tokens, it will tell you to find the exit. And that's when we find Royal McDonald waving the checkered flag. Now we can shoot this Super Soaker, A, in the air, while crouching, and you can also fire upwards and down. And we have these that hurl you into the air. And in this case, it gains me more energy and McDonald's tokens. We have 18 in total. Now, this energy bar is very, very handy, but if you fall into a slime pit, that is an instant kill, whether you've got full energy or not. Right. Or oh, McDonald's token, the 200 points for each. No, in fact you don't, it's different points for each. Anything from 100 points upwards. 250. Don't know what the maximum is, I'm sure I'll find out. 250 is the maximum I've seen so far. It depends on what colour it is. Right, 5 minutes, 46 remaining. It's a great game. I played it on the Sega Mega Drive first, but it's a shame that the scrolling is so quick. It's just too quick. It, wants, it needs to be a little bit more smoother, a little bit more slower to keep going with your character. But there we go. Falling for a big height does not kill you, even though it does scream in agony, in pain. I don't blame him. I'm falling from a height. I think I'll probably scream. Right, okay, more of these in the air. We haven't found any visible platforms yet. Right, energy is bad. Now your Super Soaker Slime does glide through the air, and sometimes that's a great thing because if there's an enemy nearby, sometimes the gliding can be just be enough to kill that enemy. Now killing those can also be quite deadly because 
not only does it explode, but slime gets hurled through the air. Right, there's a checkpoint. We need some serious, serious energy. There's some visible platforms. And he looks down on it thinking, what is this? That's an invisible platform, mate. Up there is some more tokens. But it's not tokens we need right now, it is energy. Desperately. Avoid the slime. Avoid enemies throwing slime at you. Right, we have 37. I can't remember how many you need. But I'm probably nowhere near getting the required amount. And you haven't got enough, he'll tell you to go back. We've got enough! Fantastic! Woohoo! Brilliant! No slime is good slime. As often as they say in gladiatorial circle, that was Slime World 1, we're going on to Slime World 2. Here we are at Slime World 2. Again, very, very samey, but it's going to be more challenging. And lots more slime pits. You don't want to fall in a slime pit, that's instant death. But, when you get to another level, your energy does replenish. And I love games that do that. And this game is challenging. I have never ever finished it. In fact, the furthest I've ever got in this game is the second area. Which is very, very difficult. The enemies I tend to struggle with the most on the second level is enemies that fly. In fact, that's the case with most games these days. It's always deadly. And always the most difficult for me. Flying enemies. They don't fire at you, it's the birds I'm referring to. Right, more enemies that throw slime at you, but one hit with a super soaker destroys them. They blow up into little slime bits. Now if that was a generator, those slime bits would actually hurt you. Not here, not with these. But falling in there is death, written all over it. Now when you use this super soaker, be careful when you're close to an edge, because the force of the blast will actually push you back. So if you're near a cliff edge, that could actually result in you getting killed. You'll be killed by your own weapon. Right, let's get away from here. Get to safe ground where there's no more slime nearby. I do like this game. It's good fun. Great soundtrack too. There's quite a few McDonald's games. I haven't played all of them. But I do like the occasional McDonald's from time to time. Who doesn't? Right, destroy that and avoid the slime and avoid the debris. There's a checkpoint. Let's get that because I don't want to go back to the start. We have nine tokens. Jamie, we've got a lot of tokens to get. Here's where we're going to find some more secret blocks. Which is lucky because that's exactly where these ends are. We have 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, you get the idea. And we are resulted, rewarded, with a lovely life. No, we're not rewarded with another life, because that last one didn't have a platform. Little meanie. We do get checkpoints. 22 we have in total. Not enough. Ronald McDonald will not be impressed with that. And speaking of Ronald McDonald, he's no longer around. He's not part of McDonald's anymore, but in the old days, he was. I remember it well. I think a lot of children got frightened by him, because... Some children were fine by clowns. I wasn't. I never had a fear of clowns. I know few people have. Were they afraid of Ronald McDonald? I don't know. Maybe. Did it put them off having McDonald's? I don't think so. Right, down we go. Uh, we need some serious tokens. Time, 5 minutes, 35 remaining. Now these ones don't shoot at you, they just go up walls. Up or down. One hit is going to hurt. It does hurt. Right, 24, 5 minutes, 22 remaining. Still a lot to do. Enemies are shooting slime from their mouths. It's very, very handy that you can shoot upwards and downwards. But the time gives you more time, which is an alarm clock. Now the Mega Drive version, I played loads with one of my friends from school. Really good. And that one is definitely a bit better with the scrolling. It's a shame, it's such a good game on Amiga. It could be so much better. But I've always wanted to get a box version. And boom and pow, I have it. Alright, okay. I do like the stage. The stages. Good detail. Now the Game Boy port of the title was also fully dis developed by Damien Stones of Climax. But was never released for the same reasons as this Super NES version. In the single player mode, the player controls Mick and Mac through four levels 
Slime World, Mystical Forest, Toxic Town, and Arctic World. Well, I've not seen those last two. I'm too stuck on this one and the second one. Each world has several sub-stages where the character must claim, collect a certain number of golden arches to advance. This, of course, is the McDonald's logo. Right, we have 32. Still people to get. We have birds. They're guided in their quest by Ronald McDonald, who appears at the beginning of the game and at the end of the game. And the characters are armed with Super Soakers, type gun that shoots gooey projectiles. And there's another checkpoint. They can also shoot while falling, even though he is screaming in agony. The game engine is the same used in other virtual interactive games such as Cool Spot and Disney's Aladdin. As all of them, Mega Drive Genesis versions were handled by David Perry's programming team, which eventually turned into Shiny Entertainment. Right, there's plenty of statistics. Six minutes, fifteen to go. Let's find the exit. Maybe one day I'll finish it, but it's so difficult. I do actually own it as well on the Sega Mega Drive, which I forgot to mention. But that's using the pads. I have to admit, I prefer using joystick. I always have done. And always will do. Right. Kill those. Shoot down, you hold down and fire. To shoot up, you hold up and fire. It's as simple as that. Right, 38 to go. No, we don't. We have 38. Here we go! Good old Ronald McDonald. As Mac always says, slime or be slimed. Right, Slime World 3, not today. There's plenty of footage. Let's go for something else. And we also get a practice game. A practice bonus game. Okay, the bonus level. Move back or mech left and right to catch the falling of items consisting of the paper, bottles and cans. Position your kit in front of the correct bin and press fire to throw the piece of garbage that you are carrying into that bin. The bin are marked to show what type of garbage should be recycled in each. Only one piece of garbage can be carried at once. The level ends when a piece of garbage lays flat on the ground. And watch out for anvils. Get ready to recycle, I shall indeed. Right, good fun. We have cans. Cans go in the can bin. Bottles go in the bottle bin. And paper goes in the paper bin. Sounds straightforward, sort of, but it does get very, very difficult very, very quickly. The problem is your character is fast, but you only hold one at a time. But don't get hit on the head by an anvil. That's going to give him a serious headache. But as you progress, items will get faster. Providing the item bounces, you'll stay intact. When it lays flat on the ground, game is over. Get hit on the head with an anvil, the game is over. Get a decent quantity and a life will come down from the sky. But eventually, these will get faster. Which is okay, but when you've got to go from one side to the other very, very quickly, that's when I struggle. And it's speeding up very, very quickly. But sometimes, the anvil can actually give you a little bit more time. Right, that's, that's my life. When you turn around very, very quickly, it does skid, and that does give you a little bit of a setback. Now they're coming down rather fast. If a paper down comes down by the paper bin, that helps. When it's going to go from one side to the other very, very quickly, that gets a little bit too much for me. Right, there's another life coming down. Never got two before. Cool, that is cool. That is marvellous. Best go ever. Can. Can I can I prove it? Bottle, bottle. No, that's just too many bottles for me. Eat your heart out, Lily. <laughs> <coughs> there we go. That's global gladiators. Okay, that's all I bought in February 2020. Now March 2020. It's going to be quite interesting because I had a little bit of extra cash. Yes, I did. Treat ourselves. Why not? We only live once now, don't we? But anyway, this is Jamie from All of Us Games. Please like, please comment, please share. And please do subscribe to my channel, Facebook fan page, and Instagram, also on Twitch. Just type in All of Us Games, you'll find it fairly easy. And please remember to click on the bell icon that will notify you when the videos are loaded. Fantastic. We'll do these sort of videos. I do retro long plays about cheats, hungry making, and live streams every Friday night at UK time, right at 8 o'clock. So I'll look right Till next time, take it easy. Ciao, bye. See ya. The first developed by Big Mac Brothers and published by Master Tronic. Now that's wrong as well. Jamie just weed with her. Mega Blast. I can get to the final level, but it's not far enough to get a completion. Mm. Mm. 
Okay, the start of the game is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is a 1992 platformer game developed by Aspect and published by... S I only said Sony Computer Entertainment. <laughs> I don't think so, James. <clears throat> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, my God. The game is a sequel to the game Sonic the Hedgehog and follows the character as he rescues his friend Sonic. Well, he's rescuing Sonic, Jamie, and then he's rescued himself. No, he's got to rescue his friend Tails. He was met with critical acclaim, or reviewers praised its visual gameplay and claiming its visuals and gameplay. What? You can't read your own writing. You can't read your own writing. You might as well give up now. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is a 1992 platformer game developed by Aspect and published by Sega for the Sega Master System. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not dying. I'm not dying at all. I'm just making mistakes. I don't know what is worse, dying or make mistakes. We've made too many mistakes. That probably is worse than dying. It's embarrassing. Sonic Hedgehog 2 is a 1992 platform up game developed by Aspect and published by Sony Computer... Jamie, it's not Sony Computer Entertainment. You said that twice today. Sony Computer Entertainment is PlayStation. This is definitely not PlayStation. Try again. And published by Sega for the Master System and Sega Master System game. Jamie, it's not a Sega Master System Game Gear. This is a Master System. Game Beer. Game Beer? Oh my lord, Jamie, how much did you... Uh, game Beer. Did I just say that? The gameplay is based on a number of levels while collecting gold. Coins. We're playing this game again. Jamie, it's not coins. Coins is Mario. Rings is Sonic. Please, I don't want a repeat of this. <sighs> yeah, even he's had enough. Look, I don't care, he's saying. I don't care. Right. <laughs> oh, too many cables. Too many cables. Oh my lord, why well, I got a major tangle. <sighs> Jamie, you don't want tangles of cables when you're about to go around a loop the loop at high speed. Developed by Weststone as part of Sega Boys. Sega Boys. S <clears throat> Sega Boys. Sega Boys? No. Sega Wonder Boys. Part of Sega's Wonder Boy. It was published by Sega and released for the Mars System in 1989 and for the GameCube. GameCube. Game Gear, Jamie. Don't forget this, this is a 1992 platformer game. <laughs> David Perry for the Sega Mega Drive Genesis and eventually ported to other. <laughs> <coughs> 